Awesome. Well, hello, Steeple Church, and thank you so much for having me today. I'm sorry that I can't be with you in person today as we're in another lockdown, but nonetheless, I am very privileged to be able to share the word today. And I want to say a big thank you, of course, to Pastor Corey and Jane for giving me the opportunity to preach today. I've known Pastor Corey and Jane for a number of years right now. We won't think about how long it's been, Pastor Corey, but it's been a while. And, you know, they are great people with big hearts for God and for his church and so you're really blessed to have such wonderful pastors leading you especially in this season well i have a word today that i believe will encourage you and i know it is has been hard for all of us lockdown 6.0 the extension so depending on how you count it is it 6.0 or 6.1 but we're here again seems like not much has changed in the last year but i do believe that god wants to encourage us in this season. A little bit about me before I get into the word today. I pastor at uh, Faith Christian Church in the southeast suburbs of Melbourne. Uh, my husband and I pastor our Waverley campus and uh, I'm married. I have two young boys, Ben and Daniel. And last year, just before the pandemic hit, we adopted a dog, which has been really good for us. So that's a little bit about us. And uh, today I want to share with you from Nehemiah chapter 6. And so if you've got your Bibles, why don't you turn with me there today? I'm going to read from verses 1 to 4. And when word came to Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab and the rest of our enemies that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it, though up to that time I had not set the doors in the gates. Sanballat and Geshem sent me this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But they were scheming to harm me, so I sent messages to them to, with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message and each time I gave them the answer. You know, Nehemiah is one of my favorite leaders in the Bible and God gives him a very specific call, just as each one of us has a very specific call on our lives. And Nehemiah's call was kind of unique, a little bit different. He felt called to build a wall. Now, I know what you're thinking, not that kind of wall but a different wall, a wall in the Middle East many, many years ago. And Nehemiah was called to build this wall to protect Jerusalem, to rebuild what had been lost many years before. And I wonder though how it sounded to so many people. You know, if we were to think about it this way, imagine Nehemiah's at a party and, uh, you know, as introductions go around and people begin to say what they do. What do you do for a living? What do you do? Well, you know, I'm a, a doctor or I'm a builder or, you know, I do this, I do that, I'm a banker. And he gets to Nehemiah and Nehemiah says, well, I build walls. That's what he was called to do. And as we read in the book of Nehemiah, even though he felt a very strong calling from God to build this wall, so many didn't understand it. So many mocked him. So many opposed what God had put on his life. And I wonder if you have felt like Nehemiah may have felt at that time, where God has put something upon your heart. God has given you a calling, but maybe not everyone in your world understands that. Maybe not everyone in your world even supports that. And yet Nehemiah stuck to what God had called him to do. So today I want to share with you a word. And if you like to take notes and you want a title today, the title of my message is Don't Come Down. Because I love this thought that Nehemiah builds this wall. And in the passage that I just read, you know, we reach a critical point in Nehemiah's building of the wall. We find out that the wall is mostly done, but the gates have not been put in. So in other words, although it's mostly completed and the city is mostly protected, yet there are gaps in the wall where the gates would go. So it reaches a critical point then where actually it could all be successful or it could all fail. Because if the enemies do come in at this point and they still can because there are gaps in the wall, then everything that they've worked for up to this point could be lost. And so we reach a critical stage in Nehemiah's journey where if he stops now, all could be lost. Where if he doesn't persevere, things could go very differently. 
And so it's at this point that word comes to Nehemiah that people want to meet with him. And those people who want to meet with Nehemiah are actually the same people who at the beginning of the book of Nehemiah, when he feels this call to build a wall, they are the people who opposed him. They are the people who mocked him. They are the people who did not see the same vision that he had for his life. Does that sound familiar to you? Have you ever felt like Nehemiah? Have you ever been in that situation where you have a call upon your life and maybe not everybody agrees. Maybe not everyone supports you. Maybe even in some situations, people mock you, make fun of you because what has been put on your heart. And yet in this moment, I love what the English Standard Version says in verse 3. As they invite him to come down and meet with Nehemiah. Nehemiah could have seen this in two ways. He could have seen it as a great opportunity or as a distraction. And so he sends word to them. And this is what he says to them. And this is the focus of my message today. He says, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it? and come down to you. I love that. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. What a powerful statement to make to the same people that had actually opposed him, to the same people that had actually laughed at him at different points, the same people that didn't want him to do what God had put on his heart to do. And yet he boldly declares, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. You know, I just believe in this season that we're in, where things stop and start and so much is uncertain. It's so easy for us to feel discouraged. I was just speaking with some colleagues of mine just before I filmed this about how this lockdown is just a little bit different. It's a little bit hard to stay motivated. It's so discouraging at times when we seem to go back. And yet, I love this encouragement for Nehemiah. I want to encourage you to really take that and make that your own today. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. You know, we forget that it is a mark of faith to stay where you are. So often we prioritize going forward, achieving goals. You know, when we speak to people and we relate to people, it's always about what goals we're achieving. How are we moving forward? What progress are we making? And so one of the great challenges that we have in this season for us here in Melbourne, particularly, and if you're not watching from Melbourne, you might be in lockdown like us, but the challenge of being in lockdown is that it seems like a lot of what we have put our value in is standing still. You know, the progress that we would normally measure in certain things, how we're going at work, how our kids are going at school, what new hobbies we're picking up, maybe uh, the different things in our personal life, maybe we have other goals with our hobbies. And some of the, a lot of those things now have been put on hold. And yet actually, faith values staying where you are. There is value to staying where you are. We actually don't place enough value on staying with what God has put upon our hearts and just staying with it. But yet the Bible does. The Bible talks about faith as being people who will stay with what God has called them to do. And so I want to encourage you today. One of my first points today is don't come down to distraction. I love that Nehemiah makes that declaration. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. So today, can I encourage you, don't come down to distraction in this season. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58 says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you. I love that idea. Let nothing move you. You know, so many things could have distracted Nehemiah at this point in the passage that we read read previously. You know, as people came, finally, those who had opposed him and said, let's meet, let's talk about this work that you are doing. I wonder if he was tempted to go down and meet with them so that he could convince the people, the very people who opposed what he had done, to convince them and to bring them on side. I wonder if you've ever felt that temptation before, to try and get people to see your point of view, to try and get people to see the value of what you are doing. And then later, he is distracted even further. If we read further down in that passage in verse 8, those same people, when Nehemiah says no to them four times, he's not going to meet with them, those same people begin to make false accusations against him and begin to threaten him and tell him that they're going to go back and they're going to tell the king that he is actually going against the king. And it's not true. 
And so again, Nehemiah faces this distraction. He faces the distraction of the temptation to actually go and prove himself to people who are not for him. He faces the distraction of people who are opposing him. And yet he stays absolutely focused in what God has called him to do. So easy right now to be distracted. There's so much going on. We might be in our homes, we might feel that each day it doesn't feel like we've achieved much and yet when we look at the wider world, if you just read the news or watch the news, so much happens in such a short uh, amount of time and I want to encourage you in this season that it's so easy for us to go down to distraction. It's so easy for us to not fix our eyes on what God has called us to do in this season. So can I encourage you, even as you're watching right now, just to think and, and to meditate upon what God has called you to in this season. There are so many things we can continue to do. Yes, our lives look different, but we can continue to focus on what God has called us to do. You know, for me personally, our family in this season, we've tried to keep our eyes focused on what God has called us to do. For us, my husband and I with young kids, we're in that season of homeschooling and it is difficult. No one would have told me when I had my first child nine and a half years ago that I'd be homeschooling at some point. That's not something I planned, and yet God has called me to be a mother. God has called my husband to be a father. And so we keep our eyes fixed on that. We do our best that we can in this season. God has called me to be a pastor and to look after and care for those who are in my care in this season. And so even though church looks so different right now, I can still fix my eyes on what God has called me to do. So what has God called you to do? How can you fix your eyes on what God has called you to do in this season? Don't come down to distraction. Don't come down, don't come back down. Don't come back down. You know, it took Nehemiah so much to get to where he was at that time. Think about it, he would have persevered so much already. And if you don't know the story of Nehemiah, I wanna encourage you to go back and read it. It's a really easy read and it's a very interesting story. But when God placed this call upon his heart to build a wall, he wasn't even in Jerusalem at the time. He had to get permission to go and travel, and go back to Jerusalem. He had to find people to support him. It took a lot of work to build the wall to where it was at that point. And yet in that moment, that key moment, he could have been distracted to go back down. I wonder uh, how often we are tempted to go back down. We're tempted to go back to the way that we're living. You know, in this season right now, as we find ourselves away from community, maybe especially away from church community, it can be really hard for us to stay focused on who God has called us to be. It can be really hard for us, even in our journey of faith, to stay focused on Him, to stay focused on the new life that He has given us. And yet I want to encourage you in this season, do not go back down. You know, in Galatians 5 and verse 1, it says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. You know, those words still hold true for so much of us today. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Let's not go back then. Let's not go back down again to how our lives used to be. You might be struggling in this season. You might be finding it really hard. Maybe some old habits are starting to creep back in. Maybe you're struggling with the lack of routine that lockdown inevitably brings. And I wanna encourage you in this season, really reach out to some of your leaders. Begin to be accountable, you know, be vulnerable with people around you. People can support you and help you, but do not go back down. You have come this far like Nehemiah had. Do not go back down because it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Number three is don't look down. Don't look down. Isaiah 40 and verse 26 says this, lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. I love that. You know, that was written in a time of great discouragement for the people of God. They were in exile. They were away from their homeland. And yet in that season, Isaiah writes, lift up your eyes, lift them up, look up. God's encouragement was, don't just look to the situation around you, look to me. Lift your eyes up and see who I am. Lift your eyes up and see what God can do. Psalm 34 and verse 5 says, those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered 
with shame. You know, when we focus on what's going on around us too much, we look down. When we focus on the situation rather than on God, we're looking down. How about when we focus on what divides us rather than what unites us? Are we looking up in that moment? I want to encourage you in this season that so many people are feeling a lot of emotions and what you see is that there's a lot of things that divide us. A lot of opinions that are dividing us and we're allowing those things even within our church family to divide us. I want to encourage you in this season, let's look to what unites us. You know what unites us no matter what church we go to, whatever denomination, is that we are people of the King. We have been saved by the grace that is found in Christ Jesus. That is what unites us. So don't look down, look up. You know, uh, just recently, somehow miraculously, in between these last three lockdowns, my family and I managed to get away for a week to Queensland. And uh, we were staying near the Great Barrier Reef and we took our kids on a, a boat ride for the day and we were out snorkeling. And actually that day we came back and we're out of reception. We came back and discovered we were in another lockdown. So we had this brief moment of, of wonderful time with our family and so we were out on the Great Barrier Reef and my youngest is five and my kids, I take my kids to swimming lessons and um, or as I like to think about it, my weekly torture because my youngest is five and he hates swimming and uh, well he has a love-hate relationship with it. He likes the idea of it but the moment he's in the pool he starts screaming and um, I'm that parent that sits there while my kid screams at the teacher and doesn't want to swim and is afraid of water and so we hoped that this trip would be a good experience for him and so he got in the water and he was snorkeling and he was happy because his face is completely covered and he doesn't get wet and, and so he's snorkeling and we're staying they have rope lines there and you can hold on to it and you can snorkel and you can see the fish and the coral and um, and he was doing so well that I thought I'm gonna take him away from the rope line I'm gonna hold on to him he had a safety vest on he couldn't drown and it was floating completely I'm gonna let him just look around a little bit more because there were some great amazing things to see on the other side and he was doing fine he was swimming he didn't notice until the moment he looked down and saw how deep it was and then he just began to scream for all the wonderful tourists to hear. He completely freaked out. He was screaming. He thought he was going to drown. And there I was in the middle of the Great Barrier Reef having to try and calm him down. And so we took him back to the rope line again where he was happy. And I can't help but think that actually his situation hadn't changed. It's just that his perspective had changed. You see, when he was holding the rope line, he still had a safety vest on. There was still absolutely zero chance of him actually going into the water. But actually what changed was his perspective because the moment he looked down, it changed how he saw the situation. I want to encourage you in this season, whether our circumstances change or not, we can choose to either look up or look down. Would you look up in this season? Can I encourage you, if you're feeling discouraged, to look up and look to the one who brings life. Finally, my final point today is don't come down from your calling. You know, in verse 2, as Nehemiah is building this wall, the word comes to him and, and they say to him, let's meet on the plains of Ono. And what's interesting about the plains of Ono is that it was actually the boundary of the safe area in Jerusalem. And so at that time, as they were building, Jerusalem was in a safe place for the people of God. But the surrounding territories had all their enemies and so they had to stay within Jerusalem but the plains of Ono were kind of like a little bit of no man's land you see if he had just stepped a little too far out maybe got his bearings wrong he would have actually have been in enemy territory and that means that any harm to him would have been considered legitimate in those days because he wasn't in his territory and so it's interesting that he is asked to meet with those people, not in a place that's safe and a place that he can flourish, but just in that gray area outside of what he was called to do. You know, so often we can be tempted to stray outside of what God has called us to do. Maybe we see what other people are doing. Maybe the grass just looks greener on the other side and we think maybe we should do those other things. And I want to encourage you in this season, stay laser focused with what God has called you to do. Not what others have been called to do, but what has God called you to do? Stay focused on that. Don't go down from your calling. You know, the temptation was to go and to try and settle things, but actually that would have taken him outside of what God had called him to do.
As we close today, let me read to you one final scripture. It's a great passage. I love this uh, particular warrior that we read about in 2 Samuel 23 as we're reading about all of King David's mighty men. And in verses 11 to 12, it speaks about a man named Shammah. And it says, Next to him was Shammah, son of Agi, the Hararite. And when the Philistines banded together at a place where there was a field full of lentils, Israel's troops fled from them. But Shammah took his stand in the middle of the field. He defended it and struck the Philistines down and the Lord brought about a great victory. I love that thought. I love that of all the mighty warriors that are honored in that chapter, there's one Shammah who is honored not actually for what he, uh, extra ground that he manages to conquer in that season, but actually that he just stood and protected the one thing that he felt that he should do. He just stayed there in that field, a field of lentils, one that would have supplied food for people. And as everyone else left and fled because it seemed like they were defeated, Shammah just decided he would stay with laser focus on what God had called him to do. And so he defended that field. And I want to encourage you in this season, that it is time that we stayed and defended the field that God has given us. What's your field in this season? Is your field your family in this season? You know, if you've got children, if you're married in this season, I want to encourage you, defend your field. Use this time to grow in your marriage, grow in your family, to be a better parent in this season. Even despite the obstacles that we're facing and the challenges that we're facing, we can defend our field. You know, we can make a decision that we're going to stay exactly where God has called us. We may not be able to do a whole lot in this season, but we can stay laser focused on what God has called us to do. You know, we are called to know him and to make him known. Let's stay. Let's defend our field. Let's not underestimate what God has called us to do in this season. So let me encourage you. You might be feeling discouraged because there are lots of things you can't accomplish in this season, but you can stay with what God has called you to do. If you're studying today, you can stay laser focused. You can say, God, would you give me the strength and the grace to defend my field and just stick with what I can do in this season. Can I pray with you today? I believe that as I've been speaking that God has been encouraging many of you and I believe particularly that there are people here today that need to be encouraged that they are doing a great work in this season. Some of you have been feeling that, you know what, this season has just been a lost season. You've been thinking about, God, why has this season taken so much from me? But I want to encourage you that this season is actually not a season of loss, but that God actually wants to produce something in and through you in this season, that you would stay, that you would not come down from the great work that God has called you to do, that he would strengthen you in this season. So can I pray with you if you're in your homes, in your car today, wherever you're at, would you just close your eyes as I pray? God, I thank you for your people, the wonderful people of Steeple Church. God, I thank you that even in this season, as challenging, as hard as it is today, God, you're giving us strength today, that you continue to strengthen us, Lord, to not come down from what you have called us to do. God, I just declare over every person today that they are doing a great work, that they will not come down, but God, that in this season, they would stay focused on you, on who you are, and on what they have been called to do. So God, I pray today for parents. I pray, God, that you'd encourage them and strengthen in this season, Lord, to continue to stay doing the great work of being a parent. For those who are married, I pray, God, that you'd strengthen and encourage them, Lord, to stay with the great work of building a strong marriage in this season. Lord, for those who are studying, God, I pray, God, that you would give them strength to stay with their great work. For those who are working, God, I pray, encourage them as they are doing a great work in the work that you have called them to do. Now, I feel particularly right now just to pray for those who've been called to care for others in this season. I believe there are people here who are watching and you're caring for, it might be a family member, it might be uh, your job that you're actually in care. I just want to pray for you right now. God has called you to a great work. You are doing a great work. Do not come down in this season. God, I pray for those who are caring for others in this season, whether it's family members, loved ones, whether their job is in care. God, I thank you. You have called them to a great work. And I just declare over them that they would stay in that great work. They would not come down. In the name of Jesus, I pray. 
Amen, amen. Well, thank you for having me, Steeple Church. Hope to be with you in person one day real soon. But in the meantime, I pray that you be blessed in this season. Amen.